breeding meat chickens using the Cornish cross. The Cornish cross is a slightly loose term for the modern chicken carcass we purchase at the grocery store. Breeding chickens for meat is a complex process. If you're looking to raise meat chickens, the next natural step is to consider breeding chickens for a sustainable flock. However it is common belief that the Cornish cross cannot be bred at home because they are hybrids. It's also believed that the Cornish cross's reproduction capabilities have been eliminated through breeding, rendering them no longer breedable chickens because they cannot lay eggs. This is entirely untrue. I've personally collected countless eggs from Cornish cross hens. They lay very large white eggs and if not overfed will lay fairly well. It just takes around six months before most meat birds start laying and in general meat chickens do not lay nearly as many eggs as laying chickens do. Meat chickens are bred for meat production and laying chickens are bred for egg production and the idea of dual-purpose breeds is basically a myth. Another myth is that the Cornish cross meat chicken cannot be kept alive over two months because their legs will break or they will have a heart attack. This can happen, especially if allowed to overfeed but if kept on a healthy restricted diet, the Cornish cross can actually fly up to a two-foot roost. So why use such a challenging bird as the Cornish cross to breed with? There are no other chickens I've ever seen that can produce meat like the Cornish cross. Dual-purpose birds are really a fallacy in this modern world. Most are hatchery birds that once upon a time were good dual-purpose lines but fail to meet up to any type of a real meat-producing bird. It seriously is a joke comparing even a New Hampshire utility-bred bird to a Cornish cross, which is about the closest thing you will ever get to a Cornish cross in my opinion. New Hampshire were actually the original broiler which is what they call a younger like 5 or 6 week Cornish cross meat chicken. It takes 16 to 18 plus weeks to grow out a good utility bred New Hampshire and it still won't weigh as much as an 8 week old Cornish crossbird. The meat quality will be night and day though to be honest. A good New Hampshire will have a moist finer textured meat compared to the dry chunky textured Cornish cross meat chicken. And that there lays another question as to if the Cornish cross is worth your time even trying to breed with. But please listen to this interesting video about my own experiences raising and breeding the Cornish cross meat chicken. Diet is the ticket for any bird intended for breeding purposes and birds should be fed. The parent stock of the Cornish cross meat chicken is fed a restricted diet and I suggest if you are planning an attempt to breed with the Cornish cross meat chicken that you research more into the feed regimens the industry uses for feeding the Cornish cross parent stock. Breeding the Cornish cross meat chicken is somewhat challenging but it's definitely not impossible. I've accomplished it several times but mostly through outcrossing. You see, the biggest challenges when it comes to breeding the Cornish cross meat bird is finding a Cornish cross rooster that can properly mount a Cornish cross hen. Selection is always part of any breeding project and it's also the biggest part of any breeding project. When selecting a Cornish cross rooster for breeding, leg length is extremely important. If the Cornish cross rooster's legs are too long, he may have mounting issues. Mating is a balancing act for the rooster and Cornish cross roosters have a lot of weight to balance. The longer-legged Cornish cross roosters in my experience are more prone to breaking their legs if kept beyond the eight-week stage and are the first chickens you use for the table. Now some people are going to say that the Cornish cross is a true breeding meat chicken but that's also not true. Only inbred lines are true breeding and the Cornish cross is what the industry calls an F2 hybrid. I call it a polyhybrid but that's another discussion. What F2 hybrid means in the industry's eyes is that one F1 hybrid is crossed to another F1 hybrid. F1 hybrids are the result of two true breeding lines being crossed together, so it actually takes four true breeding lines in total to make the Cornish cross meat chicken. Okay, so long legs are an undesirable trait, but on the other hand, legs that are too short will make it tougher to jump up to mount the hen. But I've noticed if the Cornish cross rooster isn't too aggressive, the Cornish cross hen will actually lay on the ground and allow the rooster an easy mount. On the same note, a hen with shorter legs is going to be less likely to fall over while being mounted. So I suggest culling towards shorter legs right out of the gate. This way you can go ahead and put these longer-legged birds on meat bird, high-protein, feed and feed regime and use the long-legged birds for the table. And yes, some Cornish cross roosters actually do the chicken dance. This kind of an interesting thing but it's how a more well-bred line of rooster will almost ask the hen if he can mount her by kind of tilting his wing inward and slowly circling the hen. This is not something that all Cornish cross roosters do though, and if at all possible try to find roosters that do the chicken dance when breeding with any line. I know it can be asking a bit much when we are dealing with a breed of chicken that is known to be quite difficult. So now you can begin to see that you will need to start with a decent population of Cornish cross chickens to end up with a decent number of breeding birds. But you don't need a huge population really at first. I suggest 50 minimum, at least 25 cockerels or males, and 25 pullets. 
I'm not saying this can't be done with less chickens, but the more the better, but only if you have enough space and it takes a lot of space. To grow breeders they need as much exercise as possible so a good sized run at minimal is required. I suggest ordering 25 males and 25 females instead of straight run because you will probably get a large number of hens. If I started with 25 Cornish cross hens I would only keep the best 6 and also the same with the Cornish cross roosters. You could keep less roosters because they are more of a hassle and get quite territorial so they need to be separated. And to be honest you should probably keep the hens separated until you want to breed the hens which only needs to be done about every two weeks. Let the rooster visit the hens while under watch only. It is my experience with Cornish cross roosters that they can be incredibly aggressive toward hens and your hens should be saddled for protection because these big boys can and will dig deep into their poor hens backs if not protected. I'll provide a link for those who don't know what a hen saddle is or are just curious. When working any breeding project you want to have backups. Birds die and the mortality rate of Cornish cross adult chickens is higher than average. I like to keep three roosters but if you can start with six or more it might not be a bad plan if you can afford the extra feed and space. The industry breeding practices may have given us genetics for premium chickens but it also gives us just the opposite. Some of the Cornish cross roosters will have no desire to try to mount a hen. On the other hand I've watched a prime six-month-old Cornish cross male mount a white duck and ride it around the chicken run. It was hilarious and I wish I had videos of it. But once again there will be a lot of selection going on with a project like this and lots of unexpected and undesirable qualities will occur but there is huge possibility that great things can happen. Thinking back to the Cornish cross rooster that mounted the duck. It wasn't long before he quit being so frisky because the daylight hours were reverting back toward the winter solstice and getting less and less each day. That's another challenge to breeding meat chickens and especially the Cornish cross. It takes about six months for Cornish cross hens to start laying and maybe the reason why a lot of people believe that Cornish meat hens don't lay. And about the time they reach laying maturity the sunlight hours dwindle which forces even mature hens to stop laying. An artificial light source in the coop will be required to keep your Cornish cross meat hens laying throughout the winter. A total of 14 to 16 hours of daylight is required to keep your Cornish cross hens laying throughout the winter. Simple LED lights are sufficient and you don't have to get a high wattage equivalent. A 25 watt equivalent is usually sufficient if placed over the roost. It takes quite a while to get your hens in laying mode once they have fallen out of laying mode and the Cornish cross hen can take a couple months to start laying again. Chickens never lay as well after experiencing the short days during the winter solstice in my experience. Maybe allowing them to molt would work but what a costly mess. This is something else to note for your egg-laying chickens as daylight hours works the same on them. And when breeding with the Cornish cross getting enough hatching eggs to be sufficient is already a challenge. It's also a good time to note that hens are affected by sunlight as are most known living creatures and plants. Learning how many hours your particular line of Cornish cross hens perform the best is something else that will help. Because actually creating enough eggs to hatch in one week intervals is another challenge. This is important because chicken eggs lose their hatchability in 7 days. Hatching as in any meat chicken breeding project is something you need to know how to do. If you do not know how to hatch chicken eggs research the topic as this video is not going to get into the details. Hatching chicken eggs is kind of a skill and another obvious challenge when it comes to breeding any kind of chicken. The number of breeds that were created without using artificial hatchers is amazing when you consider what it takes to use a hatcher and don't expect to consistently hatch eggs by using broody hens unless you have a line bred entirely to be broody which I believe is how so many breeds were created in the 1800s. If you want to learn more about hatching chicken eggs check out our egg hatching videos or other videos in our hatching chicken eggs playlist. Okay, just like the hens, the roosters will also be affected by the hours of daylight. So don't expect meat roosters like the Cornish cross to have the desire to mount hens if they are kept outside or somewhere that they are not getting 14 to 16 hours of light. I think 14 is better than 16 for roosters if you can separate the hours somehow. I reason that because I've noticed that roosters are most frisky in the spring and autumn and 14 hours of daylight artificially represents autumn or spring more so than 16 hours which would be more akin to summertime hours. Of course this depends on where you live geographically. If you are concerned about the color of light a more orange colored bulb would resemble evening sunlight while a whiter bulb would provide brighter daylight type of light. I think orange to be best so 2200 to 2700 Kelvin LED bulbs would probably work great and cause less stress which is also a factor in egg production.
You can use a timer so the lights come on and off when they need to so you don't waste electricity and don't need to run out to the chicken coop to turn the lights on and off. In the north where I live, it's too cold to mess around with breeding during the winter months so around February after the winter is beginning to fade, I start gearing the coop and birds up for breeding season. The Cornish cross roosters need to be conditioned with proper feed and exercised as much as possible through the winter and a good three to four weeks prior to actual breeding. Deworming all birds before breeding season prep is part of a good prep. These Cornish cross chickens are going to be working hard for you so make sure you take good care of them throughout the entire year. And, extra special care prior to and throughout the entire breeding season. When more active your breeding Cornish cross meat chickens need more protein than they do during their off-season. There are creative protein sources that can be used to help save money and possibly offer your chickens a more organic food source. Of course if you can, allowing your chickens to free range is also a great way to provide a natural food source, but in the spring there may not be sufficient plant growth or insect availability. And spring is when it all begins for most chicken breeders. Check out our videos about less expensive alternative high-protein food sources and other like chicken feed videos in our alternative and inexpensive high-protein chicken feed playlists. Breeding season is hard on your breeding flock, so make sure your breeding chickens are prepared. Also be prepared to use different roosters. There are several reasons I say that. One being that you want to see the quality of offspring each rooster produces. This obviously will require more space than just using one rooster if you wish to keep tabs on them, which I do suggest. You can also use a toe punch or banding plan to keep track of that. But you want to keep the birds separated by age also because big birds won't let smaller birds eat due to natural pecking order. Like hatching chicken eggs this is a challenge that almost all chicken breeders face. Check out the video description for the tools mentioned in this video.